Hey, it's Heather, and today is a very good day for an adventure in gardening. This is my favorite time of year, and I pretty much spend the entire day outside in the garden. I also really love to cook and use the fresh ingredients that I'm growing here in the garden. So finding balance between those two things is something I really need to work on. So we're gonna walk around and collect the ingredients that I need for dinner tonight. On the menu, I have a pork roast in the crock pot right now that I need some fresh rosemary for the top of it. So we'll go harvest that. And I'm going to make a cucumber and red onion salad on a bed of arugula. And the arugula is looking really good and I'll show you where that is. And uh, the green beans, we're gonna do some green beans. And I'm also going to make a gooseberry, a gooseberry upside down cake. And it's a recipe that I normally use for my ground cherries. And I'm going to be sharing that recipe with you today. And I don't normally share my recipes, so I'll, I'll, put, I'll, I'll make sure I put it in the, in the descriptions below so that in case you wanna give it a try, it is a great recipe. So I'll walk you through all that too. Uh, um, first thing that we're gonna do is pick the gooseberries. Now, gooseberries um, are part of my childhood. I already started to pick some of them. My grandmother had a gooseberry bush, and I remember my, my grandparents' garden was so magical to me. I, it was like, as a kid, you know, they really had some really cool things. They had some water features, and, you know, it was just, they had, you know, fish and uh, concrete with marbles, and everyone's name and handprint was in it. It was just a really cool place to be. But my child memory cannot connect um, two things, because I remember sitting under a gooseberry bush and eating the gooseberries. My gooseberry bush doesn't get that big. So gooseberries are definitely not that popular in the United States. But I actually love gooseberries and mostly I eat them fresh. And last year I tried to make a gooseberry pie and you know what? I didn't like it so much. So I'm really hoping that my upside down gooseberry cake is a winner because I, and I've made gooseberry jam and that is really delicious and I like to use that. So I like gooseberry jam. I didn't like the pie so much and I'm hoping that I like the cake. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick the rest of these gooseberries. I usually wait until they have that um, maroon look to them and I pick them because they're a little sweeter. But um, I'm going to pick both today for the cake so that there are some green ones and some red, some um, maroon ones and it's kind of like that sweet and tart kind of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the rest of these. So the cucumber plants are looking so, pretty good so far this year. There are some squash bugs here that I come through and I try to squish as many as I can every single day and I found that to be the most effective way to keep them off of your um, any of your cucurbits. Um, also those cucumber beetles, the little orange beetles with the black spots. I've seen a couple so far, but man, when they get in there, it, it's really hard to control them. So if you see them, squish them. So let's go ahead under the foliage and see what we can find for cucumbers for dinner. So right in front of the cucumbers is uh, celeriac. These are my celeriac plants. This is my first year growing celeriac, and I have to say it looks pretty good. Loving this. So let's go ahead and look for cucumbers here. All right, so yeah, that one's not big enough yet. Oh wait, this one is. I think these are Boston picklers. Hopefully I can get a couple more. Oh, this one right here is, I, I hope I don't pronounce the name wrong. This is Puna Kira, I, I believe that's how you say it. We had one of these the other night, they were really good. So that's two, how about one more? See this, I don't like this, I don't like to see this. This is caused from those little stinkers, the uh, striped cucumber beetle. I don't like that. All right. Pretty sure I saw a really big one this morning when I was out here. 
Alright, here's one. That one's good. Lots of little baby cucumbers. Okay, so I don't need many green beans and I know that there's not a ton in here. My first planting, I usually just do a few, well, I don't know, maybe there's 20 green bean plants. I just did a second crop of green beans down by the tomato garden um, for canning purposes. But right here in the front, that's all arugula. And then there are a few green beans here. And then there's uh, potatoes in the back. And the potatoes are kind of leaning on the green beans, which is fine. Um, I just give them a shove to the back. So let's see what we can find here for green beans. Now if the green beans get too big, I just leave them where they're at for seed. And this will be the group that I save the seed from. I should have done this really early this morning because right now it's very warm and very sunny. One way to know if your green beans have gone past their prime is when I pick them, I'm using my thumb to go ahead and push in right at the top and I just snap them off. If it is soft and like it feels like there's air in this part, that's when they're usually not, you don't want to, you, they're just not good anymore. I mean, they're good, but it's like, you know, why wouldn't you want the best? So you want that snap that happens here, a real easy thing. So if they're soft and it gives resistance when you go ahead and, and try to get them off of the plant, then just leave them for seed. Now riddle me this, why is it July and hot, and it's been super hot, and this arugula looks this good? The arugula that I started in March, I got to eat some from, and then it bolted. The arugula that I started in April went, bolted directly. This arugula that I started in May is the best arugula ever. Is it the length of days? Is it the moon? I don't know. Anyone else know? All I can tell you is this is tasty, tasty arugula and I'm super happy to have it. So I'm not going to have a big salad of arugula. I just need enough to put under the, um, the cucumber and the um, cucumber and red onion salad I'm going to make. And, and when I pick the arugula or any other salad greens, they go directly into a bowl of water in the kitchen. I let them soak for a little while so that if there's any critters in there, they'll get out, hopefully, get the dirt off. And if they've wilted it all from the sun, they'll, they'll kind of revive. So bowl of water for these guys for a little bit. They look good though, they're fine. Do you know what this is? This is purslane, and it's pretty much just a weed. Everyone considers it to be a weed, but this is a very nutritional plant. So I am going to harvest some of this with my little snips here, and add this to my cucumber salad. Plus it's kind of going over into the basil. Now the reason I grow this plant, or the reason I let this plant grow here, is because it is a source, it's a plant source of omega-3s. Okay, we need some rosemary, so I'll just grab some of this, and I just want to show you the sweet potatoes while we're here growing. So far, so good. So it's literally been hours since I 
uh, picked my vegetables. I did bring everything inside and got it soaking. Um, but you know, when I don't want to do something, like come inside, I'll do all the things instead of, instead of what I need to do. And then from out of nowhere, a storm hit. I'm not even kidding, like a rainstorm and there was hail. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going inside to make my cake, so. So I'm inside now and we're gonna go ahead and get this gooseberry upside down cake in the oven. Um, but I forgot to mention the reason I didn't need a lot of string beans is because we're going to have some uh, new potatoes tonight. I dug some red new potatoes and I'll need some more rosemary for this and I'm gonna cook them on the grill. So, um, and I haven't washed them yet or anything so I'll get them soaking in just a few minutes. So the thing that takes the most amount of time when um, when making anything with gooseberries is the fact that every single berry needs to be topped and tailed. The, the, the flower end is still on, the flower end is still on, and the stem end is still on, and when I eat them fresh, I usually just pop the whole thing into my mouth, no big deal. But I'm making a dessert, and you want to cut off the stem and the flower end. So I put a whole bunch of them in my hand at one time and I top and I tail and I top and I tail and again and again. And then I started thinking maybe that's why they're not so popular in the, in the United States. Um, this is a little tedious but well worth it uh, and I highly recommend gooseberries. All right, so I topped and I tailed. I have two nine inch cake pans, all right? One of them will actually be baking in and the other one is um, for me to measure how many gooseberries I needed. So you want one, sing one whole single layer of gooseberries um, covered, really packed in there, okay? So those are my gooseberries that I measured out. Everything is topped and tailed and clean. It's going to be a great dessert. I just know it's going to be really jammy, I think. Um, and then my cake pan that I'm actually going to be baking in, there's no liner. I don't line the pan when I'm doing an upside down cake. Um, there's a lot of butter in here. This is not normally how I prepare my pans, but you want that gooey kind of caramelly thing going on. So here is my buttered nine inch pan and I have uh, a half a cup, excuse me, a quarter cup of organic sugar that I'm just going to sprinkle, maybe if I stand over here. All right, well, it's my first cooking video. Um, I'm just going to sprinkle this in the bottom of the pan, okay? And then I'm going to shake it around. And then I'm going to take my gooseberries. Okay, and I'm going to put them in this pan. Get them to all lay down in the butter and the sugar. And I will put the recipe in the, um, in the notes below, okay? I hope you try this because this is a really good, this is a great recipe. At least it's a great recipe when I use it for ground cherries. This is my first time actually using it for gooseberries, but I think it's going to work out great. I have an oven preheated at 400 degrees right now. Now it is a little hot for cake, but we want that pop to happen with the gooseberries. So I have all of my dry ingredients here. There's um, one and a half cups of flour, a half cup of sugar, and two teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and to that, well first I'm going to take and I'm going to just mix this up. Okay. And to that I am going to add a half a cup of melted butter and a half a cup of milk that I have mixed together and then I whisked <laughs> I'm just going to reheat this real quick. See, I thought I could take a shortcut and get everything prepped ahead of time so that I could show you real quick on how to do this. Yeah, so my butter solidified 
and with the milk and so it'll just be a minute we'll let it you know melt again on the stove so okay so now we're all set so I just had to remelt the butter because you know I was trying to be clever prep ahead of time get everything ready and then I added the cold milk to the melted butter yep so now normally when I make a cake I'll stand here normally when I make a cake I use my mixer this is this is a really easy cake recipe and it's not necessary to dirty the mixer so I'm just going to do it by hand so I'm pouring in my half cup of milk and my half cup melted butter I'm going to scrape it clean waste not want not Okay, and one egg. I'm going to use my whisk for this. So I'm just going to get it to come together. Now when you are making cakes in general, you don't want to over mix your cakes. You want to just get them to come together. So like that. Okay. Now I'm going to use my spatula again and I'm going to pour this mixture on top of my gooseberries. Okay. You will see what this looks like when it's all done. So now I am just going to take in my spatula, oops, I don't want my gooseberries to move around, and I'm just going to smooth out my batter. You don't want to move your gooseberries. Actually, there's a, there's a tool. I have a tool. My spatula. All right. Look at, oh yeah. See, you used the right tool for the job. All right, into the oven. So whenever I bake a cake, I like to give my babies a little taste of the cake. You want a little taste of cake? Come here. Come here. Up, up. Come on. Up, up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good girl. So the cook time was exactly 30 minutes in a 400, 400 degree oven and the toothpick came out clean. So that 30 minutes gave me enough time to cut up my red potatoes and I'm cooking in a cast iron pan on the grill. It's a great quick way to do potatoes, like give them that real crispiness. Um, and it, it on the grill it happens really quick because you can like cook it like at 500 degrees. Um, and also I put together the cucumber salad. So cucumber and red onion, olive oil, apple cider vinegar, garlic. Okay. So um, now as far as the cake goes, this is what the cake looks like. Okay. So it's real golden on the top. And um, so I, I, I tested it with a toothpick. It came out clean and then it sat for 10 minutes to cool. So it's still pretty hot to the touch. So 10 minutes to cool out of the oven and then I'm going to invert it and let it sit upside down for 30, um, for 20 more minutes, okay? And then I'll take the pan off. So I'm not gonna touch the pan for 20 minutes, not even to peek, not even to see. 
Is it done yet? No, no, it's not done yet. So I just take my plate, put it over top, flip, and wait 20 minutes. I just heard it fall. Okay, I'm not gonna look though. You gotta leave it. Just leave it. Okay, um, so I will go ahead and at the end of this video, I will put a, just a quick little video of what it looks like when it's done. So there's plenty of daylight still left outside. I'm gonna go outside in the garden. As always, thanks for watching and click that subscribe button so you can stay in touch and you don't miss out on another adventure in gardening. See you soon.